بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وخاتم النبيين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm your brother Abu Abdullah Abdul Latif from Arabic Virtual Academy as well as AbdulLatif.com Today I want to um, I guess deal with a statement that was written on you know one of my social media pages as many of you have seen a lot of I guess um, temperatures have been rising and you know people have been getting upset about some of the topics that I've been talking about so one of our brothers was gracious enough to Asked, you know, isn't it from our men hatch or our way to deal with and stick to the Quran and the Sunnah? My answer simply is yes. We stick to the Quran and the Sunnah and all that it leads us to. Um, what do I mean when I say this? Because you know, to be honest with you, Achi, your question was very vague. You know, anybody that's Muslim claims that they're sticking to the Quran and the Sunnah. For some people, this is a reality, and some people, this is just a claim. So we need to understand what we mean when we say this. When we talk about sticking to the Quran and the Sunnah, this doesn't mean that we don't use the other types of proofs and evidences, because these other types of proofs and evidences, and the Qiyas, and the Ijma, and all of the rest of the ones that are Bujma Alayhi, and the ones that are Mukhtalafi, or Fiha, the ones that the majority of the people agree on, and the ones that uh, there are some valid differences differing in. These are all extracted from the Nusus, the Quran and the Sunnah, the texts. So this is also sticking to the text, you know, that which is extracted from the text, that which the text leads us to understand. The problem with this blanket claim that a lot of people are making, and for those of you who saw the brother's post, you know, trying to point out the brother and things along these sorts, but I, I want to clarify the issue. It's that it's not enough for us to say that we uh, stick to the Quran and the, and the Sunnah. We have to understand that it's not just about the ayat and the ahadith. But it's about understanding how to derive the correct understanding from the Quran and the Sunnah. How do we use the Quran and the Sunnah? Do you understand? It's about how we go about, um, how can I say, implementing that which we see from the Quran and the Sunnah. When do we go about doing it? It's about understanding how to use the text. Not just taking a text because we have a text that we want to run with. Now we have this eye we want to run with. We have this hadith we want to run with. And it's just about, you know, whatever, however. We're using these ayat to justify things that can't be justified Islamically. We're misusing and misplacing these ayat and these ahadith. Because we're not learning how to go about using them correctly. We're running this hadith against this hadith, and this ayah against this ayah. And we're saying, okay, well, because we're using this, we throw this one out. This isn't the way of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So again, yes, we stick to the Quran and the Sunnah, without a shadow of a doubt. This is something that none of us should disagree about. But what we mean by this 
is going to differ from person to person. There is a correct way to understand sticking to the Quran and the Sunnah, and there are a lot of incorrect ways. Just running off of the mouth because we have an ayah, we have a hadith to justify what we understand. We're not basing our understanding on the proof, but we're having our understanding and looking for a proof for it. Is this what you mean when you say um, being upon the Quran and the Sunnah? I hope not. Our deen is extracted from it, not used as a proof to support our whims and our desires. We don't just take a piece of a proof or take one proof from amongst 50, 60 proofs and say, okay, because this one fits what I'm talking about, we're going to use this one and wrap the whole issue around this particular proof. Is that just? Is this sticking to the Quran and the Sunnah as a whole or a piece of it? And to be honest with you, it's not our position to be doing this. We're followers. We follow the way of Ahlul Sunnah. We follow the way of our scholars. We follow the direction that we're given. We're not the people that make what they call istidlal. We're not individuals that say, okay, well listen, I found a hadith that says this, so this is the rule. This is not your position. It's not our position. Issues where the scholars differ. We say, okay, Sheikh Falan's opinion is wrong because of this particular hadith. What about all of the proofs and evidences that Sheikh Falan brings? Do we just throw it all under the table? Do we just wash it all away? Act like none of it exists because of a proof that you're bringing? Is this sticking to the Quran and the Sunnah? So what you are calling rhetoric is not actually rhetoric. If these ayat and ahadith are things that are general, that need to be specified, there are things that are unclear that can carry more than one meaning. That it, we need to look for those things to specify the meaning that is meant. There are things that you know, are abrogated, that they too in themselves were authentically narrated. But no longer do we work with them because a new Dalil came and abrogated the old way. But if we don't understand how any of this stuff works or that it actually happened, can we just pick and choose from these proofs and evidences and say, okay, this is the way it is because of this? Should we be even attempting to do things like this? This is why I say this claim that a lot of us have as far as we want to stick to the Quran and the Sunnah, we don't want anything else. This is almost impossible for us to do this on our own at our level of ignorance. This is why we follow. This is why we follow the instructions and the advices that are given to us from the ulama. This is why we follow their understanding and not try to refute what they're trying to say and say that this one is right and that one is wrong because we have this proof. Some of the scholars, how many times have you heard someone say some of the scholars say this, but there's this particular narration or there's this hadith that may not have reached these scholars. Is that not a really arrogant statement? You're just going to assume that these scholars were ignorant of these statements, of these ahadith, these narrations, and they came to you? These are people that dedicated their lives. This is what they did, sought knowledge and taught it and acted on it. And you just happen to haphazardly come across it and it completely missed them. Not only that particular narration, any narration like it, anything that supported it, all of it missed them. So, if 
this claim to um, be sticking to the Quran and the Sunnah means that we don't go with the opinions of this one and this one. Okay, they're just men and this, that, and the other. We're going to stick to what we see from the proofs and evidences and what we understand, and this is what we're responsible for. No, a law made you responsible if you don't know to ask the people the knowledge. We can't, we don't have enough, the majority of us, information or knowledge to be able to make these decisions. So we need to turn to those people who have the knowledge that can make these decisions for us, that we trust. We trust them as individuals religiously. We trust their inner, their knowledge. We trust their practices. And we follow their ways. This isn't separating ourselves from the Quran and the Sunnah. This is us trying to attach ourselves to it and its correct understanding. What you are suggesting, that we leave all of that off alone and we just stick with the wording of the text in English, Or have, be it in Arabic, without the correct understandings of how we use these proofs and evidences, how we understand them, what is stronger than this. This is preferred over this. Without understanding all of this, this is not sticking to the Quran and the Sunnah because this is not what we learn. From the Quran and the Sunnah, this is not what we learn from the people that have adhered to the Quran and the Sunnah all of these generations. Except, of course, those people that have the knowledge to do so. And that's not the majority of us. May Allah Ta'ala raise us all in levels when it comes to our knowledge and action, our belief. Allahumma ameen. And may Allah Ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings. I hope this clarifies the issue because I don't want to keep having to answer these types of questions. Because what we mean by now, when we say we stick to the Quran and the Sunnah should be understood. It's not just the words and the verbiage itself, but it's the correct understanding of these things. May Allah Ta'ala, as we said, increases all the beneficial knowledge. Allahumma ameen. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdi wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.